All right, hello, here we are. Uh, Timothy and I are trying a new little video situation today. Similar to what we would talk about on the podcast, I think, here and there. Um, we have some trends that have been showing up on the runway for fall winter 24, and we're going to quote unquote react and we'll talk about them. Yeah, I don't know if it's important, but we don't know what these are. Yeah. Uh, and because we don't really deal in runway, because- I've never watched a runway in my entire life. I don't really believe people that sell clothes actually deal in runway, that's for celebrities. Yeah, so for celebrities. we're gonna look at this. I've, I've definitely watched run, the runway shows, but I don't know what these trends are and who reported on them. So we're just gonna look at them and then talk about them. Boom. First one, it's called Sharp Tailing. Maybe I'm screaming right here. Without yeah. Dotted lines. Right don't point it, because they don't know, we don't know how it works. <laughs> um, sharp Tailing. Sharp tailing. Uh, okay, it's um, a little bit like 90s era NBA draft, the way the suit jacket is falling. Sure, I think that like obviously what we're gonna see in photos from runway is going to be like the more extremes of things yeah. because that's just how it goes. Yeah, kinda. I think that sharp tailoring, I, I we, we saw tailoring come back already. It came back pretty slouchy. That's where like a lot of the boat shoe shit came from, I think. Yeah. Like a lot of the like softer, like, uh, you know, not soft tailoring, but you know, just relaxed, crinkled stuff. We saw yeah. it from Aura Lee, we saw things like that. It's probably just like an extension of, and a, and a world building of that type of tailoring mm -hmm, to me. Mm -hmm. I like it. This is the kind of thing I really like. I think it's easy to mix this type with, I like when you get a little bit of the grungy mixed with like a, a you know, a higher end like piece of tailoring, like yeah. a blazer or a suit pant with a grungy t-shirt or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think those look nice. And I think that like sharp tailoring caters to that a lot better than soft tape. Like when, when it's like that more like relaxed tailoring. So you're saying in terms of sharp tailoring, they're saying it's more so in how it fits. Like it's yeah. like a little more structured. A little more angular, a okay. little more, okay. yeah, a little more. I mean, look, tailoring always is shifting, I think, yeah. but I think in this scenario, we're talking about like a shift from softer, relaxed tailoring to sharper stuff, okay. which I get. Cool. Cool. And I think makes sense to me. So uh, I like it. I'm I think for it's it. cool. And we talked about it years ago, back when we just had the store, long yeah. before this. Like we would talk about Fridays, let's try to wear a tie. Let's yeah. try to do something. We, we never ended up doing it, but I like this. I think it's cool. I think yeah. uh, like a casual way to pull it off is always fun and impressive. I, to me, as much as I liked the loose, boxy, comfortable tailoring, I, I mean, you see it a lot in like a lot of the Japanese tailoring where it's a little boxy or a little, I, I like all that a lot. It probably suits me better. Yeah. But I actually think a lot of the more sharp tailoring tends to make body shape look a lot better. It tends to, you, there's a reason to go to different brands yeah. because their version is different than this other version. I I, I like it. Like I said, yeah. I like that look with like a t-shirt and jeans. I think it looks super cool. Yeah, so. yeah. I'm, I'm pro. Yeah. This we are is pro cool. sharp tailoring. All right. Hit, hit me, what's next? Grandpa core. Grandpa core. More uh, something with core slapped on the end. Look, as former hardcore guys, we can't, hardcore's hardcore, everything else shouldn't be called core. Yeah. That being said, I understand what they're doing. It's like, um, I, this is this is tricky to me, like a grandpa core, where it's like, they, they just they kind of like, it's like every cardigan is then say, considered grandpa if core. it's like wool or a yeah. cardigan, especially both, it seems like they're like, well, that's for old men, but I feel like that's just not the case anymore. Sure. However, I see what they're saying here. It's the hot, super high-waisted pants with a yeah. belt and this, that, and the other. Um, it kind of feels loosely cool. European to me in a lot of ways, yeah. just like bigger. You yeah. know what I mean? So I don't know. I, I don't love this term. I don't think this term needs to exist necessarily. But I mean, I like I like the look here for yeah, the most cool part. Look. Yeah, it's a cool look. I, I and, and I'm in agreement. I actually think that like the suit pant thing, especially when a lot of like I've noticed, you know, a lot of people using like the pleats and things in, mm -hmm. in trousers again. I feel like that always kind of comes and goes season to season. But I think that works a lot better. Um, with a high-waisted pant. Like, yeah, I think that yeah. you get the right shape, you get the right look. A lot of these guys wearing the um, the little, uh, I don't know what we call them now, the, the tank tops. Uh, when you're doing that and using that with this, it kind of turns into a different thing to me. So when the waist goes up, you've got that, you get the cardigan over the top, it, comes, it becomes a new thing. Yeah. It's kind of like, it's kind of like sexy grandpa more than anything. Yeah. 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 Uh, we think I'm like, he has a lake house maybe. I think He's this rich. guy has like a property in, in like Southern Italy and he uh -huh. goes there in the summers and yeah. is Italian for a summer. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Cool. I, I like this. I like the look. I don't like the term. 
You know, you know what I what I think a brand that would work well for this is like Le Mer. I think that you could style yeah. Le Mer to get this. Yeah. And in fact, they actually have a more cropped version of this type of sweater yeah. that I think works much better than yeah. the longer yeah. version. The other thing I, I would like to maybe stop seeing is like sleeves being so long, like like as shown here. Really? I think we, I think we've done that enough. The long I like sleeve. It. Huh? I like it. Agree to disagree. I, I think you get to hide your little hand in it. Why do you need to do that? Makes you feel Keep safe. that thing on you? Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, all right. Next one. Cargo, Cargo everything. everything. I love this. Speak, speak on this, my friend. This feels it's like it was... It's interesting that this is cargo everything, but the pants don't have any visible pockets. You're seeing areas where there could be improvements on What pockets. I'm seeing is a lack of pockets if they're gonna, if they're gonna call it this. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, so while I don't think this is an accurate representation of cargo everything, mm -hmm. it's a look that I, I like. And in fact, this morning, I had a whole situation pulled and I decided it was too much cargo. I had like a mm -hmm. BDU and a pair of cargo pants. Mm -hmm. So I, I had eight or nine pockets on me and I decided that was a little too much. So despite me not wearing it today, it's something that I fully co-signed and am a fan of. You know, for me, I'm not a, I'm not a pocket guy. Yeah, you're not. I'd prefer there was no, yeah. almost no pockets. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It, it, like I've told you before, my ideal weekend is that I don't have anything on me at all. I don't just, have, just I don't, face. I have no <laughs> reason for pockets. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't need them. Although I do think it kind of like with a utilitarian jacket like this sort of breaks things up really nicely. Yeah. That's what I've always appreciated about what EG was doing. Like people say there's, oh, there's so many pockets. But if you really look, it kind of makes each detail more interesting yeah. and like proportional. Cause you kind of use the expanding and the flaps and all these different yeah, yeah, types yeah. of pockets to create a different proportion. In fact, what I really like like to see um, from brands like Harrell or Orslo is the kind of using older military like inspiration. So like the, I can't think of the name of them, maybe M44, P44, the um, with the pockets that are up higher. So it's like a cargo pocket that's up on the hip, yeah. creates sort of an interesting proportion. Yeah. Um, same thing with like the Harrell uses the cropped pant with the wide piece here. So you yeah. actually kind of expand the, almost the knee area and it does the more balloon thing naturally. Yeah. So I'm I'm very pro using pockets when it's changing the silhouette in like an interesting way. Yeah. So I'm, I'm super into that, Yeah. but. Not a pocket guy myself, but I like, yeah. you know, you like to see it. Yeah. Tomorrow I will wear more pockets, I just decided. Moving on. Fox fur. Fox fur. Um, this yeah. is not good. No, this jacket's bad. And like, here's the thing. I, I, I'm pro faux fur. Yeah, for like, right. we know it's faux. We don't need, <laughs> for clarify. <laughs> I don't think that we need, I don't know. Fur is a very difficult thing to pull off. A full fur coat outside of like, I mean, women's wear I think is a different scenario because the proportions kind of like cater to it a little yeah. bit more. Um, this I don't love at all. Just the entire treatment of this situation. I just don't, what do we need it for? Yeah. I just don't, I can't think of a situation where, I, where you know. Unless you're living outside. And you know, listen, I, I border on being like PETA minded, but I'm not, I, this is, it's faux fur, I'm pro that. If, you're, if you have it. to yeah. do it, I guess. I don't think that like, I think the demonizing of like, oh, that's faux. It's like, oh, come on. We're not making stuff out of it. That's insane. We're not gonna do that we, anymore. We, evolved and... we can make a very nice thing. So I'm pro the use of it if you're going to do it. I'm sure there's applications in people's style where I, I'd see it and go, oh shit. You look at like, uh, and maybe you guys can pull this, like an old Emerson Lake and Palmer. This was a, a band that you are not gonna know, but they would wear like a lot of furs and be, and yeah. you're like, it kind of looks cool. Yeah. Like it's not yeah. for me, but yeah. it looks really sick. Yeah. So I do think there's applications for it. And obviously the use of faux yeah. is better. Yeah. Faux fur and like the overvest, sure. reversible stuff like that. Well, and you wear one of yeah. those. So I mean, maybe that's the thing. Like if you can put it on the inside of something, make it reversible so you can pop it now and then like, you know, I think that you'll often do it when everything else is very tonal. Yeah. No, and I, and I don't wanna say boring, but like very like mellow and then you throw that and then it doesn't feel like such a big the statement. Yeah, yeah. I think that's like an interesting way to use it. And I still like to see a little like fur on a collar or something like that now. And like little touches of it, I think are yeah. nice. But this is not tasteful. No, this is gaudy and I don't think we, I don't yeah. think it's necessary. I don't see where I would apply it in fashion right now. So, meh. Moving on. All right, vertical stripes. Vertical stripes were traditionally uh, poo pooed because it's not physically flattering. Is that the, is I understand it right? That's horizontal stripes. Horizontal stripes are not physically They flattering. say that that's not flattering because it makes you look wider. I've never really noticed that. And I think it also really depends on like how something is fitting you. Mm -hmm. But I do understand like why it's said. Vertical stripes I think make things look longer. I think of it more as I like old like 
the old shirts with like uh, like banking stripe on them. You know what I mean? Where yeah, you get that. About, yeah. Yeah. I, I think that looks really nice and like and so to apply that in different ways, it's just something you don't see that often. So I do like it, mm -hmm. and I think like actually I don't love this particular jacket personally, but I do like the idea of it on a longer jacket to make more of a statement out yeah. of like, this is something you don't always see. Yeah. I think they're a little underused. I really liked them, like I said, on old shirting and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I like stripes though, so yeah, I don't, you know. I generally do too. Yeah, no, I think that it's nice to see this come back actually. Yeah. So I, I, this is good. Yeah, it's one of those things like a blue Oxford with stripes is like the most classic. Yeah, and it looks good on anybody. Classic, and yeah. yeah, it kind of like, it also for some reason looks more professional than any other like pattern you could possibly introduce. So if I you agree. needed to like pull it into an office mm -hmm. or do something like that, I think it works. Yeah, All Yankees right. jerseys. That's true. Polished leather, okay. This is a great look. Yeah, this look is actually really cool. And uh, in particular, I really like the beanie. I, I really dig that. Well, the styling and, and the, I know this isn't what we're commenting on it, but I like the shoes. I like the styling. I like the color palette. I don't know what this is, but it's nice. Mm. Um, polished leather, this mm. is a tough one to pull off, but I do think that like when I've seen it done well, it's because it's like like a furry, almost like what I'm doing here, like a furry sweater, you kind of like, match it against the opposite. And then I think that's yep. pretty cool. You know yep. what I mean? When yep. you're using you like- You want something smooth and sleek underneath. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Otherwise it, and then, and then I think it's really hard to, then you have to match it perfectly because it all needs to come from the same brand. Mm -hmm. This, when you're like totally doing it as just the jacket, it's kind of like almost like wearing nylon. Yeah. Like I think like wearing like a cool nylon jacket with like a super fuzzy sweater or something, it's that cool, looks cool. that looks really great because there's like a really noticeable contrast yeah. in texture. Um, I like it. They're taking I, inspo from the dude in the bear that wears the leather jacket and the track pants. You know what I'm talking mm, about? Mm, mm. That's a kind of like a, it's a very Chicago look. Is it actually? <laughs> yeah, I think I so, yeah. Why they yeah. Do that. Like a shiny like, leather is definitely still happening in Chicago. Like maybe <laughs> well, it's like yeah. cracked leather at this point yeah, from the when the trend yeah, started, yeah. but it's, yeah. I, I, yeah, I think this looks good. I, I mean, maybe difficult to find the right version. This is obviously the right version. I think yeah. if you can find something that's like, not matte, but not like patent leather. Yeah, Somewhere yeah, in right between on. is probably the way to do it, but it's, it's cool. It's a, it's a cool look. Cool. All right, moving on. This might be the last one. Dazzling, Dazzling details. details. He's got the magician gloves on. This, that's a magician ass fit right yeah, there. Yeah, he's a magician. And you know what? I like it a little bit. I'm not gonna wear that, yeah. personally. Yeah. I don't know where I would go that you'd wear that. I'm not sure what details. Are they talking about the gloves? They're either talking about the gloves or they're talking about the sparkle on his vest. This is like if like Penn and Teller was a club kid. <laughs> yeah, 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 it is. I don't know what details we're talking about this here. This is like if Rick Owens got into magic. <laughs> He's into so. magic, dude. <laughs> <laughs> his YouTube search is all magic. I, I too had a short mind stint freak. where I wanted to get into magic. So. Was it Mind Freak that did it for you? Uh, he, was, he was probably what started it, Chris Angel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Father Chris. Father Chris. I think that, look, I will agree that I think because, you know, especially going down the line of like getting into like Japanese fashion yeah. and stuff like we are, tends to be on the more minimal side. I think the way that you dress or I dress is very minimal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Overall, yeah. compared Large, to a lot largely. of, yeah. not a ton of patterning, not a ton of things like, you know, the, the, the details that aren't gonna blow your mind. They're, they're subtle things that you just notice. Yeah. I think adding something like, into a wardrobe like ours in like, you know, a bold bag or an eyewear choice or a hat or that's the places to splash up. Mm -hmm. I really think that like if you mostly dress that way, you can easily introduce those things and have like a statement piece that you yeah. don't have to have on all day. I think if you're a person who mostly dresses in like white t-shirts, you could have a bold watch, for yeah. example, like that because you have the space to take occupy. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So I guess if that's sort of the reason, I get it, but I think they're more talking about like that there's like sparkles and stuff in it. I don't know about that. I'm like I'm I'm into it if you can figure out a way to pull that off, but I'm not sure who's making stuff that yeah. you know that that's a lot tougher to do. Yeah, like cuz it's a like a pointed vest with sequins trim and then like an OJ glove. I think that well, I think the way we got to like look at it as is I'm pro big bold detail or like accessory choices mm -hmm. if the rest of your wardrobe is relatively simple. Yeah. I you know agree. what I mean? Yeah. I think that's I think that's a cool back to way the to faux fur kind of situation. Yeah. Really. If you can kind of pull it back and make it work on a on a smaller level, yeah. 
because most people, that's where you're coming into it at. Look, there's obviously people, there's outliers in everything with fashion. There's certain people where it's like, mm -hmm. I would never, and then you see somebody like, oh, they look yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I don't, I don't know, but I think for this, if that's what we're talking about, I think it's a, it's a good, good, Fine. good trend that'd be going on. Yeah. Okay. One more, I think. Or we'll Shades of red. Shades I've of red. This seen is tight. this. Red yeah. rules. We've been saying this for a while that like red is like a hard color to wear, but like if you get it right, it's so it's, it's so great. In fact, yeah. I'm literally I have like a thing on my watch list in eBay right now that's a very bold like red yeah, shore yeah. coat. Yeah. I already have the one from Capital yeah, that's yeah. like a softer red. Mm -hmm. I like. I'm a big. I've always been a red sock guy. Yeah, yeah. I red's like cool. a pop of red. I think that the trick is. Tonally, you have to make it work with like your tone and your palette. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. this is almost like a jewel-y color and then they've got it with like, what is that, a purple pant? It's a purple pant. It's a purple leaning pant. Purple so pant, like those make dude. sense to me, like palette wise that works and he's in there and that works with his skin tone and his hair and it, it, like if you match it correctly, to like whatever you're into, I think it works. But it's it red is a tricky mm. color in that way. What are you trying to see that you? Can I was see? trying to see it. It's Gucci. It's a Gucci belt and mm. it's a Gucci bag. I was trying yeah. to see, it. and I also want to see that necklace. That's wild. You can um, zoom in. Red's really cool. Red's really cool. It's just like it's like a thing that you have to pay enough enough like a, a certain amount of attention to. It's yeah. like you can't just grab anything red. I don't think like yeah. there's certain colors that are really gonna like imbalance your either palette, skin tone, whatever yeah, it is. Sure, it's sure. It, it's a, it's a something that can easily not complement yeah. if you're not careful about yeah. what choice of red. But I think adding it in, in as like a pop, like like that softer red looks so nice with denim because those two, especially a soft like a lighter colored denim, that red looks really nice together. Um, burgundy, yeah, nice burgundy, like olive brown, exactly. Yeah. So there's like. Like totally ways to make this work 100%. It's just a little trickier than just being like, I'm gonna add some red. Yeah, so yeah. just be, I think if you're smart about the color, the, the hue choice, I think yeah. you, I think you're gonna be good. I love it, I love the idea. I love that they've got it in the belt too. Yeah. And I think, bag. again, if you can just work it in, like I always liked it so much in the, in like a red, in like a sharp red sock, cause you just kind of see it now and yeah, then. And then you're like, oh man, like it's, it's but noticeable. But it, it starts the eye and separates other colors. And it mostly matches with everything. Yeah. And I, I can't think of a color it doesn't match with as long as you're, you know, conscientious yeah. of the palette yeah. you wear. Well, I think we're on the last one now. <laughs> Gender fluid elements, skirts, dresses, and tights. Yeah, we just, this is, Great. I mean, look, it's again, it's a tough thing to work in if you don't know how or not naturally drawn to it. Yeah. I think you know whether like this is something I can easily work in or not. I'm all for it though. We got to stop that, that there's if women's and men's clothes. It doesn't matter. If you're comfortable, wear whatever you want. Like in the confidence will show through. Any Anywhere else that we've been in the world, it seems to be much less of a thing than it is yeah. here. It's certainly just like, it's it's unisex. All the clothes are closed. Mm -hmm. You can make kind of whatever you need to work, work. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm for it. I, I don't think we need one. And this isn't some political statement. It's just simply because I don't want to be put into a box and I don't think anybody wants to. Yeah, so like, whatever. let us rock with whatever we want to rock with. Um, that being said, this fella is pulling off these tights in a way that I would have never expected a person to be able I, to do that. So he's not like a terrible truly thin incredible. guy either, but like they look good. Yeah, he looked great. There's a farm I pass on my way in where they wear kilts. It's called Kilt Farm. And they're all wearing kilts, harvesting lettuce and shit. Interesting, so. yeah, cool. I mean, do it. I mean, you see, you see, and like, that's the thing. Like, like for example, like I really only ever like like sunglass frames that are women's and it's like why well, I, I would mm -hmm. it shouldn't matter like it, it doesn't I Such mean what's it game. yeah it doesn't it, it, all of this is just silly so 100% do whatever you want none of this matters the, f the flower is a, is a good yeah a good uh, accessory there too. life's not permanent if you want to wear tights fucking put on tights they oh, look cool so I think it's just but the, the key is knowing what what you're like drawn to and what level of confidence you can bring yeah. to the table yeah. you know what fair, I mean fair. so you got to match those couple things I don't think you want to be like I'm gonna I'm gonna randomly start trying some stuff. Yeah. I mean, like, work it in slowly, figure out what works for you. That would be the styling advice I have, but yeah. I think just because I think it's like a personal. Yeah, just own it, make yeah. a decision, own but it. But that's yeah. the thing, once you do it, you gotta just be you like, I'm doing it. this, yeah. and fuck anyone who's gonna. You have to have a little bit of this with fashion in general, I think, mm -hmm. just being like, I'm gonna do this regardless, and if everyone makes fun of me. I used to wear a blazer to school for a little while, yeah. got clowned on constantly, and I was just like, you're too dumb to understand what I'm doing. So yeah. you have to have the superiority complex yeah. Yeah. that's a little hardwired into you to be into clothes in the first place. So yeah. if you got that, you can do whatever you want. Okay. Yeah. All right, I think this one is the <laughs> last one. Layers on layers. Is this Aura Libra? 
It might I think it I is. Think it's it's definitely because we have that yeah, piece coming. Yeah, this and yeah. the, the, that the hoodie colors thing, all work. It's layers really on good. Layers. Yeah, great. This is something that we've been arguing for, not arguing for, we've been uh, very uh, vocal supporters of for years and years and years. Yeah, As I, an EG yeah. fan or uh, the other brands we carry, like it all, it's all layers. It, yes. What Aura Lee does that makes it work so well is combining like fabrics that are not like, if that makes yeah. sense. I know that's not the best way to phrase that, but those pants are like very soft and flowy. Mm -hmm. And then that mid piece feels very structured and then the out feels unstructured yeah. again. Playing with those different things, like yeah. it's not just, put, layers isn't just putting a bunch of stuff on, it's thoughtfully curating a bunch of fabrics yes. and, and silhouettes together to complement. you know what I mean? Because it can be really tricky to do this. It's not just like, if you got if you did the same thing, because obviously they're pulling inspiration from like a Carhartt hoodie. Mm -hmm. If you put a Carhartt hoodie underneath any random pea coat you bought at J. Yeah, Crew, like it's gonna uh, it's gonna fit story. so weird. You're not gonna yeah. move your yeah. arms. Yeah. You definitely yeah. can't drive a car in it. Yeah. Like it's it's tricky. So you really have to like learn what works. But I think that if you just really live in all your clothes too, you start kind of doing this accidentally, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then you start being like, oh, that's kind of like a that created an interesting proportion. Yeah, yeah. it's. I think it's one of those, like, if you're talking about the Maslow's hierarchy of styling and being in the fashion, this is harder than it seems. Like, big, we're huge pro in the experimentation, but getting really good at this or being like a master, like I think Orly really has become, that is, uh, that's tricky. Yeah. So the great thing is, like we're doing right now, just look at the runways. And even if you can't afford everything on the runway, you pull um, cues. From you it. Pull cues. Yeah. And watch what they're doing with silhouette and with what they're doing with fabric choice, because every one of those things is like extremely intentional, yeah. especially when you look at someone, just not to shout out Aurelia, I'm just a big fan. Um, the, the choices of fabric and everything and how they intermix is really intentional. Yeah. Um, so keep keep that in mind. And then also like, I would start like, Something that's fun to do and easy, I think people know this, but you can like find things that you're naturally drawn to, like a movie or a painting or anything that's physical art mm -hmm. and look at what the color palette is and start yeah. dissecting that color palette and saying, okay, I love that color palette. It really agrees with me. I want to wear it and see if you can sort of like pull those colors from a bunch of stuff in your yeah. wardrobe or that you start to buy and then you start mingling those together. And as long as you're building like a long-term wardrobe, that's gonna really like, all of it will play it yeah. well together and then you yeah. can start yeah. kind of mixing. Cause this is another one where, actually to go back, if you were to throw a pop of red into this color palette, that would be really striking because of like how simplistic this yeah. is. So it gives you a lot of options actually. It's just, it's trickier than just tossing on everything, but I think you also have to toss on everything to know what works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, we're obviously couldn't be more no. for this. So this is my yeah, favorite one so has far. a sponge texture to it too. So yeah. I'm excited to get it. Mm -hmm. All right, on to the last one. <laughs> that was the last that one. That was the last one. All right, uh, so thank you for watching. This was a new concept. Uh, that was fun. We can uh, extrapolate this into various other yeah. things. If you have uh, like, videos. maybe if you have a gang of whether they're like weird or interesting or whatever they might Funny be. Funny series, whatever, send them um, all. And you want us to like talk about them or Put our, put our thoughts out there on them, that would be fun. These are pretty like simple, safe, like fun things to review. But like like I said, it'd be funny if it was a bunch of wild ass stuff we don't know about. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's cool. I mean like, uh, and like if there's other elements that we could include that would make this more, you know, fun or Come easy to, yeah, sure. yeah, let's yeah. do it. Let us know. So thank you. Tell them to where, what all to do. I always forget all the things. Uh, we've got a podcast, it's called Customer Service Podcast. It's Timothy and I, it's uh, us kind of doing Things like this, maybe more or less related to fashion, depending on the episode. We have guests on, we talk about, tell random life stories, share thoughts, uh, vulnerable or not, etc. Customer service podcast, regular listen podcasts. Um, you can also hop over to the website right now. Seasonal sale is bopping. And so copy some stuff at 70% off. Uh, we've got a Patreon, patreon.com slash shop canoe club. Uh, pop over there for early access to seasonal sale, early access to drops. We had one this morning early access to collaborations and um, whatever we're doing, whatever else we decide we want to give yeah. you early access to, uh, gives you instant access to our discord community. Um, pop over there, check it out. All the offers are up. Other than that, be in touch. You can find us in all of these various ways and more. So we look forward to hearing from you and thank you for being